I'm your host, Nicole Crowley. Today we are at Dungeon Boxing Gym. Come on and work out with me. Hi, I'm Nicole. Hi, I'm Carrie. Welcome to the dungeon. Nice to meet you. You as well. All right, I'm ready to get my workout on. All right, cool, let's go. Let's all right, do let's it. go. I'm so excited. So this is where all of it takes place. This is where the action takes place. Yes, ma'am. This is what all goes down in. This is the actual dungeon right here. I'm really excited to take a walk around and see what's going on. All right, cool, let's go. Let's start okay. here. This right here, it helps you focus on your hand and eye coordination. Um, I have a fighter that's gonna demonstrate that for you as we, as we walk through. Might be too much for me, but I would love to see that demonstration. Before you leave, we're gonna get you on this and we're gonna see okay. what you're working with. All right, All right? Let's see. Okay. Tanar right now, he's 154 weight class. We're trying to get him down to the 147. Nice. Um, he has a competition coming up at the end of the month, uh, end of August. There's a tournament coming up, so he'll be competing in that. He's an amateur. He has a record, uh, amateur record of 12 wins, I believe, and three losses. Nice. So it's, it's a lot to it, though. We got to make sure we, we get them developed, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so you work with them one-on-one -on -one in here when they're getting ready for competition? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my guys that compete, they come in in the morning. We train twice a day. Nice. They come in in the morning, maybe 7 or 8 o'clock, depending on what we got going on. They'll start off with a run. A running, uh, a, a running uh, regimen, you know, come in here and we'll get some of this bag work, nice. we'll get the bags and we'll do something else. I'm really excited to see what he does for competition. Oh, uh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Here we're gonna do a slight demonstration on speed bags so I can show you how to get it. Okay, let's All go right. ahead. Here, this is my son, Randy, and he's going to demonstrate the speed bag work. Okay, see, so what you do is, it's a rhythm. Once you hit the bag the first time, it's gonna go one, two, three, and you wanna catch it in the midst of that third knot. So, one, two, three. I see all these guys in here, shirts off, they're ready for action, they're working. Do you have any female boxers? Oh uh, yes, we do have females uh, that train with us. We don't have any that actually compete with okay. the dining team. So we are looking for some female uh, competitors that are looking to uh, compete in this amateur or pro. Come and check us out. Okay. The first thing you do, you need to you know embrace as a boxer is your conditioning. Okay. Um, the only other athlete in professional sports that's more conditioned than a boxer is a professional swimmer. Okay. Um, but you know, so a lot of you have a lot of uh, basketball players, football players who in the off season come to the gym to train because they like they like our workout. They like okay. our conditioning workout and it keeps them it keeps them fresh, it keeps them um, ready for right. their season. So okay. they come and train with us in the off season by the time they go back to their spring training or you know what I'm saying, uh preseason training, they're, they're ready. Are, they're ready. Nice, they're ready. okay. The heavy bag is more uh, more so of power. Nice. All right, and, okay. and punch placement, okay? Okay. Over here we have William Williams. He's one of our pros. Right now his record is 3-0. Nice. He is also um, an elite amateur. He was also an elite amateur. He fought on the World Series of Boxing, which is called WSB. He traveled all over the world um, competing against other countries. How long has he been training here at the gym? Oh, he's been training here at the dungeon for about two years since we opened. Yeah. This, is what the, this is the strengthening area right here. We have our, our monster rack where they do uh, bench press, squats, pull ups, dips. Right here we got right here we got uh, GJ Gerald uh, Jr. He's another one of my amateurs. He's had about eight fights. His record is six and two. He's 132 pounds right now. Right now he's doing some ad work. He's getting himself together. Yeah, he will he'll also be competing at the end of the month in August. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. So, he's focused. We have um, more than what the regular boxing gym would have. Here we have a co-submerged co tub 
Rich is sitting up in here. Uh, Can I stick my hand and see how cold it is? Mm-hmm. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about 42 degrees in there. It gets cold as 42 degrees. It gets hot as 86 degrees. It has six jets. Now, why does he have to sit in the cold, such cold water? Because what it does, like, after you do your training, your body, the soreness from your body comes from lactic acid buildup. Uh -huh. So what we do is to we help you recover faster, you have them get in a cold tub for about seven minutes. Okay. And then that ices and freezes your muscles. Mm -hmm. They get over here in the Zaz machine, which is a whole body vibration machine, it vibrates your body and it breaks up the lactic acid that nice. was from, from the ice from the okay. cold tub. What they do, they come from the cold tub. Then they go to the uh, jazz machine, okay. which breaks it up, and then they go and get in the infrared sauna. Nicole, now that you've had a tour, okay. right? You've seen everything in the dungeon, how we get out around here, right? Okay. So now you're trying to, what you trying to do? You're trying to get? I'm trying to get in that ring. You're trying to get in that ring and get Let's some work? It. Yeah. Let's go get some work. All right, Let's go. Hey, Nicole, I'm Ebony. Hi, how are you? These are my gloves, my special gloves, but today okay. I'm gonna let you. Know. I feel so honored, thank you. Be careful of your nails. Okay. Let's get this mitt working. Yeah. I feel like I'm doing something now. Oh, you about to. <laughs> the two is gonna be the straight hand. Okay. The three is gonna be the hook. The four is gonna be the hook. The five is the uppercut. The six is the uppercut. So remember, nice. everything on your lead foot and your lead hand is odd numbers. Okay. Everything on your left hand is even numbers. Okay. So that's five, one, three, five, even. two, four, six. Okay, that's a lot. Okay. All right, so let's try to start off slow. Okay. One, 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 two. Good, one, two. Okay. Okay. Just keep up at quick. it, keep up at it, I feel good. Consistency pays off with this boxing. So bag. consistency pays off. Consistency is what pays Look, off. I'm starting to sweat. Look at me. I'm starting to sweat. Wish we could get some work in. I feel good. Definitely. Nice, okay. I feel good. My pink gloves. So all you female boxers, we got pink gloves. One, two, amateur. But I'm getting there. Whether you're professional or amateur, come through the dungeon with it and make sure you get yourself together. All right. Thank you so much for watching Met Your Life. And I'm gonna go on the phone. Hi, welcome to Metro Cooking. I am your host, Nicole Crowley. I'm here now at Energized Lifestyle Cafe. After a crazy workout, I had to come here to replenish my body. So now I'm here with owner, Ebonita, and thank you so much for having us today. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, so I just had a crazy workout. I was doing so much boxing, right? So now what would I use to energize my body and get me back on normal levels for the rest of my day? Or energy? The best possible thing that I would recommend for you at this time would be a meal replacement. Um, my most popular meal replacement at this time is the peanut butter gone bananas. Okay. Uh, are you allergic to peanut butter? Then I am not. So, but it sounds good. Okay. It sounds well, really good. That's great. <laughs> now we're gonna go ahead and get you set up on one of those meal replacements. Okay. And since you're not big on vegetables, okay, you can actually get your full vegetable intake and in just taking one of these wheatgrass shots. Woo! It actually starts off in this form, and then we process it. We put it through this machine. It runs through. It comes through there juices it and this is the actual leftover residue so this is the this is the residue from the actual wheatgrass yes, yes. and this gives you okay. your full nutritional vitamin intake for one day in just one shot and you can choose to either chase it with actual orange juice or apple juice but this is it so with your one shot you be done this is my one shot of wheatgrass <laughs> okay guys and i got my shot it goes nothing thank god for the chaser <laughs>
actually after having this wheatgrass, I'm quite sure it's not the best tasting stuff in your mouth. I want to offer you aftertaste. <laughs> a sample of our strawberry mango. Okay. Mmm. Now this is really, really good. Explain to me, um, how long have you guys been in business? It's going on about two years now. We've actually um, taken over this location that was priorly owned, but it's been about two years that we've been here and business is picking up um, tremendously. So okay. that's a blessing in itself. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can see why, because these smoothies really are good. There's many smoothie spots in Atlanta. What makes you guys so unique? Energize is unique in the fact that we are catering to our everyday gym rack. We pride ourselves in providing great customer service as well as great tasting smoothies with a very low calorie count. Mm. We're also very big on hydrating your body with alkaline water, which we do carry our own personal alkaline water, which helps break up the toxins. Now you guys promised me a smoothie. Where is my smoothie? There you go. Right on time, right on time. Thank Thanks, you. Jonathan. And this was the... Gone Bananas. Oh wow, okay. Great meal replacement smoothie. I think this is by far my favorite one. This is great. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I and this is a meal replacement, you Yes, ma'am. You do not, do not have to go out there and eat anything fatty. You just had a great workout. This is your great meal replacement. You don't have to eat anything again until dinner time. Okay, great. Thank you so much for watching Metro Cooking. I am your host, Nicole Crowley. Welcome to Metro Styles. I am here with Shay Pape, a local fashion designer. Please tell us more about your line and what you like to do and all that kind of cool stuff. I just can't wait for you to tell us everything. Well, the name of my brand is Scripted One. Uh, we've been around for a little over 15 years. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of the brand is actually um, poetry in motion. That's where the name Scripted One came from. I started writing when I was about 11 and it was something my mom was against because I used to always write about everything under the sun that would happen to me and she could not stand reading about herself. So she would just try to destroy my books, but luckily I was able to save most of them. But anyway, writing um, poetry, you know, really help to relieve a lot of stress for me. Most kids, you know, when they're going through a traumatizing time, they go through therapy. That was my therapy, writing. So as I became older, fashion became my number one love and I started to take all of my poetry in motion and put it into fabric and just started doing my fabric as my poetry in motion. So that's where the word scripted came from. Wow, okay. Um, what kind of stuff did you used to write about? I have some really dark poetry. Okay. <laughs> Um, you know, it was, it was traumatizing growing up uh, where I came from and just, you know, my household in general, just it was it was hard growing up as a kid. So um, it was a lot of pain. And like I said, my mom did not like really read about herself. That. Yeah. yeah, it just really helped you through all that. It really did. Like so I, How did that translate into your fashion now? Because I have became a rebel. I don't like to follow the directions. I like to stand outside the box and do things that are not normal in fashion. Um, a lot of people like to follow the patterns and pretty much kind of be the same across the board. I, I'm not that person. I hate using patterns. <laughs> I make my own. I just, I like to be different. I like to stand out, but I want my voice to be heard. So it can't be heard if it looks like everybody else's pieces. What kind of pieces do you make? I do anywhere from swimwear, uh, ready to wear, I've done evening gowns, uh, down to suits. I actually recently, the last project I just had, I dressed Vince Sims for CBS 46 and I made him That's a custom cool. vest and a bow tie and it was, uh, I, I was a little shocked by how good it came out. Yeah. I didn't expect it to look that good so, you know, and I'm a self-taught designer and teaching myself over the last 15 really? years so yeah. Yeah, but. Well, I'm I'm really kind of liking the men's fashion that I've seen from you. I, I think that you're good at it. So Thank you. I, I kind of looked up some stuff before I came here. <laughs> um, so what do you think you would say is like your style aesthetic? What would you, how would you describe your brand? If I'm talking about, and it's three different 
parts of my brand, so it's it's a little weird. But if I'm talking about my couture line, it's more um, of an Asian feel to it, and that's mm -hmm. directly related to my culture background. My grandfather was Chinese and black, but you could not tell him yeah. that he was just Chinese. He thought he was a black man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So because of that, um, you know, he forced me to learn about my culture early on growing up. So I learned about a lot of my background on both sides, and I just fell in love with the culture and the art and just the, the whole idea of the fashion. So I kind of take that and incorporate that in my style. So if you look at some of my women pieces, a lot of elongated sleeves and a lot of big trains and just a lot of exaggerated fabric. So it's awesome. Oh, and I love this. I love how swimwear is kind of transforming, you know, like it used to just be like bikinis in a one piece and now they've got all these different kinds of things going on. Do you think that you kind of picked up on that for your bikinis and your swimwear? I definitely do. I will say that uh, my swimwear is my more sexier pieces of my brand. I remember times where I could not bring them to certain fashion shows because <laughs> of the crowd type that was there. Okay. The producer would be like, no, that's too risky. way too much, too risky. <laughs> too much skin showing. Can you put on some, like put some dresses over it? And I'm like, the feet's the purpose. Yes. So yeah, it's, uh, it's very risky. I definitely have to uh, be mindful of where I show it at. But I will tell you, Miami, or Florida in general is eating it up. So we just gonna keep it down there. They don't like okay. to wear clothes anyway. So where can people get your clothes? Where can we find these super risky bathing suits and <laughs> beautiful long trains and all that kind of stuff? The website is scripted1.us and that's where all of my pieces are located. And in about the next month or two, we'll actually be located in our first store. Um, we're teaming up with a showroom in Jacksonville, Florida. Thank you, Quiche Boutique. I love you so much. Um, we will be putting our pieces there in her boutique. So I'm really excited about that. What is Pitch Black? Because I'm not in the know. What is that? So Pitch Black Fashion Weekend was started back in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Um, me and Mike Rob, uh, also my business partner, Katie Richardson, who's in Florida, um, we lost a really dear friend of ours, Vanessa um, Banks, to domestic violence. Her fiance um, took her out. He, killed, he shot her in the head and he killed himself. Um, you know, that, it really took a toll on my team. It was really hard to try to bounce back from that and try to, let's go do another show yeah, after dealing was. with the loss of her, you know, so it was, it was really hard. Um, we decided that we wanted to make a platform where your voice can be heard. Like our whole slogan for 2017 was silence no more. And we wanted to be able to provide a platform where those who were silenced, they can finally have a voice. And that's where Pitch Black came from. So this was our second year doing it. We're getting ready for the third year now. Um, but it has been, it has been an amazing experience. I will say I'm a survivor myself. Um, <clears throat> so it was really hard for me to finally come out and tell my story. I actually, <laughs> Just recently after the show, the day after the show, I was still going through my situation. So for me to be able to be out of it now yeah. and to be able to move forward with 2018 for Pitch Black with a smile on my face, like, okay, I'm ready now. It's all over with. It's a, it's a good feeling. It's a really okay. good feeling. It's a really good feeling. But um, I, I will say that. Really intense. Yeah. And I, it's awesome that you guys could make something to kind of commemorate her you know like yeah. oh, she made me cry for real okay <laughs> so is this one of your pieces right here this is from your collection yes it is it was actually showcased in pitch black 2017 this year okay and where did you get the idea to come up with this design well the entire collection was based on royalty um, mm -hmm. because when you're in a domestic violence situation, you don't feel anything. You're just numb to the pain. You're numb to all of the violence. And I wanted the men and women to actually showcase the brand in the show and to be able to wear it for the survivors to show them that no matter what your situation are, you are royalty. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to showcase in this brand. Okay, and you've got like the red sleeve going on. Yes, so little MJ. <laughs> little MJ inspired. So thing. you designed the whole outfit though, right? Yes. The pants too? Yes. So what are like your favorite fabrics to work with? I like to work with all different kinds of fabric. This just so happens to be a lycra stretch material, so it's typically used when you do swimwear. Mm -hmm. But the material is so nice and breathable, and no matter how hot it is, like 
the the material is so breathable that he's not going to be hot with this yeah. now the jacket i can't tell you about that but the pants though <laughs> At least it'll be nice and cool when he's wearing it because in okay. the fashion show it's typically very hot so you don't want to have too many fabrics that's going to cause your models to be sweating and then they mess up the garment or they're just tired so um, I wanted to have some nice fun material so a lot of the pants are very breathable so that way they're not sweating when they're walking. Awesome. I'm really, I really like how you're trying to pull all these colors together because you have this piece sitting here and then I see you got this piece next to you. You've got a bunch of things going on, but they all kind of work together. Yes. They all have a very similar theme, even though they're different collections. I guess that's what you mean by people know it's your style, right? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Leave my signature I mark. I get it. <laughs> I called my family up and said, listen, we got to build some type of legacy. So Bonaire Fashion Magazine was the idea. They were like, well, why don't you think of something and just tell us? So I said, okay. I went home, sat down, thought of a concept, an idea, a logo, and said, hmm, what do y'all think about this? And everyone was like, well, what does it mean? It's French. Yeah. It means happiness. Something that we okay. all lack happiness, true happiness. So the whole magazine, the purpose is to be able to bring collective creatives together from all over the world. No matter how long you've been in the industry, you could have just started yesterday, it doesn't matter. If you have a story to tell, tell your story. And that's why the magazine was created. So that's where we're working on now. Um, we're actually getting ready to produce the fourth issue for a uh, third issue actually the fourth issue will be in December it's a quarterly magazine so and I get to pick the talent and do all the graphics yeah. for it so I absolutely love it it's so exciting um, my brother is the CEO of it Jay Vershad and we just kind of pulled it all together as a family and just did this so oh okay so I feel like <laughs> determination is like your thing everything yes. that you've done you kind of really pushed it you actually did it so I think this is this has been like a really great talk. I really love your passion. Thank you. And I can't wait to see more of your work. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> All right, guys, we will see you on our next segment. My name is Moni Hall, and I'm the CEO of MBP Publications, located in Atlanta, Georgia. MBP is a publication company. We create books, film, music, trailers um, from start to finish. That's really what we do. Um, I started off as a author, um, basically just telling a story, not knowing that from today I was Mo Better, which is my nickname from college, and it ended up becoming something and grew into MVP Publications. Um, MVP Publication has many faucets. We have over 40, 40 authors, um, seven or eight different reality stars, and we're moving into movies and our production. So MVP is many, many things, but to me, MVP is what I consider family. Um, I actually create books, and we actually accept um, authors from all different genres, Christian fiction, um, fiction, street lit, which is my favorite, or what we consider as urban, that's what I started out with. Um, Nonfiction, which is the autobiography, self-help. Uh, we also do um, autobiography and also the Christian fiction genre and the Christian literature, which is straight um, self-help type situations. So we do, we're a full publishing house from start to finish, um, and we're getting to, into the children's books as well. Um, my successful titles, of course, Two Tears in a Bucket. That was my first book. Um, it actually got garnered the attention of Nikki Turner, which is from Random House. Um, from that particular situation, uh, I just wrote a book about a situation that happened to me in college. Um, I was a good girl, ran into a bad boy that was a drug dealer, and unbeknownst to me, um, a, different, a whole bunch of different things happened. Um, I ended up witnessing the murder of my brother or of a drug dealer that went bad while I was on a full basketball scholarship. That situation turned me into, I don't know, it turned me into a whole different character of what I actually am today. Um, I fell on hard times. I started hanging out with the wrong people. Uh, though I didn't dibble in drugs, I drank a lot, and I started turning to a life of crime. Um, checks was my my vice, um, and I could take checks, and I could make money off of it, do what I needed to do. And for a long time, I just was in a whole different world all by myself, and I woke up one day, and I was like, this isn't me. And so um, I guess experiencing the loss of my brother, uh, someone told me just to sit down and write about it. And so that's what I did. I sat down, I got a pen and a paper, and I wrote the story. From that point, two tears 
actually was birthed. Um, unbeknownst to me, I sent the book um, to some publishers. It got a hold of uh, a guy from Simon & Schuster. And um, from that point, he told me about the BEA, which is the Book Expo of America. It's located in New York. They have this every year. It's not really for African Americans. It's mostly for the book genre, but it deals with mostly um, white America or the book industry, just as it is in um, TV. It's very narrative. Um, so there was a gentleman that had um, an author's pavilion there at the BEA, and uh, I got a booth there and set up. When I set up, I met Nikki Turner, and from that point, the rest is history. Uh, she took me up under her wings, garnered a deal with Random House, and right after that deal, the recession hit. And so when the recession hit, it was like, what do we do from this point? Borders was closing, Barnes & Nobles was questionable, and Amazon eBooks took off. So I did what anybody else would do. I just tried my luck in this industry. and. Um, I just went ahead and published some more books, got some other authors up under me, um, got a deal with Freeway Rick Ross to do his book, and everything else was history from that point. Another thing that MVP does that's different than a lot of places is that we also go to big shows. We go to where there are a lot of people. Um, we do what they call um, an African American black college football tour because our company is actually related to African Americans. But we also do the BEA, which is the book expo that has a faucet of different multitude of different people that can reach out to everyone because you never know how your story can affect different genders, different races, um, different, different factors. You know, we all have a story to tell it's just how we tell it so that's the first thing that I would tell um, someone from a ghostwriting standpoint um, after I've written a story and they they decided that they like it we go into the packaging pur purposes of it and we figure out how to tour it and make it work that's the marketing um, but you know I'm a guerrilla marketer for the most part um, there's not a, a handbook in this um, I think that when chance meets opportunity then you have a hit and you know and, and I'm, I'm a strong believer in that I've worked with a lot, a lot of people in this industry, um, either behind the scenes or with it. Um, working with Zane, uh, what has been a, a wonderful situation that's been going on. Uh, the Carly Rae situation, we were at, we filmed with Love and Hip Hop. Uh, that book drops sometime next year, and so it's just been a great. Um, I've, I've had some really, really great success stories because of the fact that I've been able to do what I need to do um, and get out there and meet them, and and I've met them by by getting out there and meeting my opportunities. It hasn't been like someone just dropped it in my lap. Um, I've been at the right place at the right time. They're seeing what we're doing. They like what we do. And so, you know, that's how I've been able to work with so many different celebs. Another way to reach me is um, I'm always on tour. So for the most part, if you're on social medias, you can go to my Facebook page at Monique S. Hall, my MVP Publications page, my Instagram and Twitter. I'm not very good at that. I'm trying to learn to be more social media oriented because I'm a Facebook girl. But our schedule is up. Um, and if you go to the MVPPublications.com and go to calendar, all of our dates are there. Uh, we kick off our major, major tour um, August the 19th. And you can catch us anywhere between August the 19th and December the 19th anywhere in America, mostly the 50 states. We're, we're there.